All right, folks. One of the things that Mr. Dan Bird did for us while I was out and about enjoying Southeast Asia is create a list of dividend stocks. He's going to go ahead and pull some of those up. And of course, I'm going to ask for favors and look at some of my personal portfolio as well. Mr. Bird, thanks for doing all you did while I was gone. Good morning. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I, you. I hope I uh, kept the people interested. I, I tried to. I, I read all the my, feedback, man. It's been given my positive. take on the market. Yeah. You know, just the way that I do it. So. I guess the one thing I want to ask here on record, uh, your plan, at least as what's currently, is you will do a, a solo midweek update for the audience. Yeah, I'll do a quick update on Wednesday. Awesome. For Thank everyone. you so much. And um, then we can do this regular Sunday. You know, it, it's it's kind of hard to do it as a monologue, frankly. It's better this uh, way, yeah. It's better as a you know, dialogue. <laughs> but yeah, I'll do a midweek just to do an update on what, I, what I'm seeing. Thank you. So I'm expecting much. the market to go down a little bit, by the way, Monday and Tuesday. We had a nice run Noted. Thursday and Friday. They don't go straight up. I think it's going to retrace and then go up more. Very cool. Well, let's see what uh, let's see what you got, and uh, hopefully, I'll have time to ask about a couple of my companies. All right, here's um, my newsletter. If anyone's interested, just send me an email to breakpointtrading at gmail.com, and I'll send you last week's and then add you to the list. And then for looking at individuals, actually, first let's um, let's go to stock charts, <clears throat> which is where my portfolios are. Mm -hmm. And um, stock charts as of last week, it is very very close. That you see, it's the the color guard. This is the daily color guard. I look at this every day. Right now, it's green. It's mildly bullish. The buy sell ratio had a huge day on Friday. Went from 0.77 to 1.11. Hmm. That's that's a big day. That's the the number of buys versus the number of sells. Okay. And the number of, you can see a number of advancers versus decliners was huge as well. Yeah, look at that. So this kind of tells you internally what's going on in the market. But if we look at the portfolios, I created three portfolios while you were gone. Oh, actually, I, I did. I actually did four, but I'm not going to talk about the monthly ones. Um, okay. But the three that I did, one was called, and this is something that one of your listeners let me know about. This actually is all three of them up here. Mm -hmm. One of your listeners said, well, what about dividend aristocrats? I, I didn't really know anything about those. And I Googled I it. Actually, I actually don't know what an arist a dividend aristocrat is. Yeah. So you can Google it and you can get the, li the list of all of them. I, that's what I, I, I use actually uh, stock charts. I mean, okay. uh, uh, VectorVest actually has one already for the aristocrats, but it's basically oh. companies that have paid dividends for the last 25 years consistently. And have increased their dividend for 25 years. So every year they've paid every and it's gone every up. year, and they're in the S and P 500. So they're large Damn. companies. Every year, they've paid and increased their dividends every year for 25 years. I didn't even know there were such companies. Look at that. If they miss one time, yep, they get taken off they the list. Oh wow! And it takes them 25 years to get back on. Because okay. it has to be, it has to be a twenty-five year consecutive period. Pretty amazing. Okay. So that's what that's what's called dividend aristocrats. Okay. So what I did was I took the top ten. I ran this and I took the top ten. And in fact, by the way, I backdated all of these to January third. Yeah, day one so, of the year. Yep. Right. So just assuming as, as we're tracking these, just assuming that you just bought these top ten, at the beginning of the year, and just kept them. Didn't. Now the other thing I want to make sure, just because of what we're looking at, these are just. Like we're up 3.49% on stock value, not dividends. Dividends are not included. That's right. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Uh, and you can see there's four losers and six gainers. Biggest loser was Sherwin-Williams. Williams. Hmm. Actually, okay. the biggest loser was Air Products. Hmm. Interesting. And the, okay. Uh, wait, let me see. Yeah, that's gain per share. So anyway, okay. there they are. Um, those are dividend aristocrats. The next one that I ran is one that VectorVest provides. Mm -hmm. And it's what they call blue chip dividend payers. Oh, wow. So Nine they, for 10. These, these are in the uh, the Dow or the S&P. Um, they have at least a 4% 
dividend, four uh, percent dividend yield at the time that it was run. Okay. Now three percent, three percent dividend yield, and they are consistently increasing their yield. So they have a dividend mm -hmm. growth that's positive. Um, and these other top ten. So again, if you bought it on January third, this would be up six point seven two percent. It's not bad. The other one was one a scan that I created myself. Mm -hmm. seventeen oh, percent. There were a number of criteria for this. It needed to have a dividend yield of at least two percent mm -hmm. as of January third. But I put in other criteria for the strength of the company itself. So mm -hmm. things like relative value. How has it how has it been versus just buying a triple A bond? Got it. Right. Is that outperforming a triple A bond? Um, is it does it have a VST value, which is value, timing, and safety above one? That's this column right here. So I, I put a number of criteria in beyond just dividend to identify both strong dividend paying stocks and strong uh, fundamentals. And you can see here 17%, basically in two months. Now, the important thing to notice, and if you just took a little bit out of each of these, I put all three of these in the newsletter. Mm -hmm. So you can see here on the aristocrats, there's chemical, utility, building, machinery, business, only two petroleum stocks. Hmm. Blue chip scan from VectorVest. There's some banks. The other ones didn't have any banks. There's an insurance company. And then in the one that I ran, a lot of petroleum. A lot of petroleum. You may be uh, not a very balanced portfolio. It's not balanced. That's right. This is just taking the, the, the stocks yeah, just as of January 3rd that were very strong in all of these categories. I like it. Now, if you're actually managing this portfolio, portfolio, you would watch these and maybe once a quarter rebalance the portfolio. Yeah, for but sure. If, if you took, and I have these 10 in my newsletter, if you just looked at the industry groups and just tried to pick, I don't know, five or eight or 10 from different industry groups out of mm -hmm. each of these, you'd have a pretty good dividend paying portfolio. Yeah. I mean, shoot, I think if you pick three out of each, you'd have a pretty good portfolio, right? I think, I think the average person having 10 stocks is a lot to watch. Yeah, I agree. I think five is, is the right number, yeah. actually. Yeah, five to 10, yeah. Okay. Right. So, you know, this is an interesting little exercise. We'll see how it goes. Very cool. Well, can I uh, uh, can I butt in now and look at some of my stocks? Or are we yeah, not ready and, and by the way, I'm not suggesting anyone buy these. No, no, we're not. No, we're just, we're playing yeah. with charts. That's right. All right. Give me a- uh, let, Let's do BX first. Or yeah, BX works. BX bouncing off the 89 day hitting hitting all these moving averages and getting ready to go through it okay the weekly is heading up you can see the rsi you don't want it to go below this purple line right here or a okay. pink line yep look at the accumulation distribution Ooh, distribution that's that's fun this one looks like it's ready to make another run higher i like it so if you were if you were going to add mm -hmm. to this right now would be the time to add. Okay. And as I said, I think maybe Monday, maybe yeah, Tuesday. If we, might, if we have might a week, be, Monday, Tuesday. Yep. I like might it. Might be a retracement, retracement. This might be time to add some more on that one. Very cool. How about um, JPM? JPM. Look at that. It's just, it's just sitting on its movie. It's a very strong chart. This looks like a 10 year treasury chart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I um, wish I would have bought more back in uh, October or whatever. Yeah, just sitting on a moving average of 21 day. That's the reversion to the mean. Look at that accumulation Ooh. distribution. Like it. The momentum indicators are just moving, just getting ready to cross over. So okay. this one too, you know, if it if it breaks out of this level, which is right at right now, mm -hmm. that's the resistance level. So it looks like about 145. If it gets okay. above 145, that's a good buy point there on that one too all right how about meta meta i was lucky enough to get two tranches of that one meta had a really nice day uh, meta probably single-handedly moved the um communication sector higher yeah we looked at that probably. we looked at that in the last session yeah um but this again is above all of its moving averages it's above the 200 the 50 the weekly is strong 
the relative strength never even made it down to the pink line. Yeah. Okay. It started going back up again. Not really great accumulation. Hmm. Um, but the momentum is starting to cross over. Accumulation right. distribution that was a little concerning to me. Um, but you know, it's it, it's had a good run on Friday, so we'll see what, what happens. But it needs to break out above 195, roughly, mm-hmm. right in this area. Okay. To have another run higher. All right. Um, and then we can we can also look at a weekly chart, long term chart on Meta. And you can see this is this is always a very bullish sign for a, a stock to make a bullish run like this and then have three days down. And then it starts up again. That's that's a very bullish signal right there. All right. Basically, then, basically a bull bull flag or a bull pennant. Oh, where it comes down. What that means is it it may have a run equal to from about here, maybe even from down here to here. It should have an equal run up here. So it may be it may go back to like two seventy five. Hmm. That would be fun, is since I'm in at ninety or whatever it is. Right. Okay. How about Snap? I'm, I was lo- hoping to add more. I put in multiple buys, and neither one, none of them, triggered while I was gone. Snap. Snap just started uh, coming up too. It hit the eighty nine. It has not got above its two hundred day. Okay. The weekly is just turning positive. The RSI didn't hit the pink line, the forty level, it's starting to go back up. Um, when it's been coming down here, the volume has been light, which is good. That's what you want to see. So this one might be ready to start a run too. Momentum is starting to turn up. Accumulation distribution looks really good. Hmm. So right. this one here, again, if it comes back down, I would I would probably put a buy-in at the 21 day, which is at 237, maybe at 1050. Okay. Put a buy-in there because this looks like it's going to start heading higher. Yeah, I put in several buys below 950 and 9 I think where I was trying to and This this is the up. weekly the weekly chart. I mean on a oh, weekly chart. Look at chart, that base. Look at that. Yeah, on a weekly nice. chart it's just like cruising right along this $10. Yeah, so you, yeah. Okay. And then there's so a micro stock I look at which we'll look at off air. I don't want to record on it, but um all right. there's a small um, cap This one this one by the way, it's got multiple levels of resistance that it has to get through. Mm-hmm. Sure. And it might it might just bounce sideways for quite a while. Yeah, it might might get up to a high of around fifteen. If it breaks through fifteen, which would probably by that time this fifty day or It'll fifty be down fifty week actually, if it breaks through both of those, then it might have a chance of getting up to thirty. Very cool. Well, you said there was a viewer that may have. Yeah, there's one other one, which is Disney. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Disney. This is the weekly again, three three days down. Hmm. Um, anytime you see this. Shooting star right here. You see that candle? Yep. Imagine a shooting star. It's got a, it's got a body at the bottom and it's got a big long tail. Yeah. That is a bearish reversal. Hmm. Very reliable bearish reversal signal. Anytime if I'm in something, anytime I see that kind of candle, this is not remember this is weekly, so this is at the end of the week. Right. But anytime I see a, a shooting star like that, I am immediately out. Okay. Um, but it's it's hitting its uh, <clears throat> moving average line right there. Let's look at the daily. So it doesn't sound so, like Disney's uh, on the. Well, Disney's the- Disney's had a hard, rough uh, go of it here recently. Yeah. Yeah. But the accumulation distribution actually doesn't look too bad. Okay. It looks like institutions still want to want to be in the stock. The momentum is starting to turn up. So I would say if you want to take a position, I would wait till it gets above the 21 day. Mm-hmm. Or if you um, are a very long term investor, you can see if it comes back down here to the 89, which is at 99, basically. Okay. But I think 100 is probably going to be support for it. Mm. So, you know, probably support or resistance. Sorry, just so it, we're clear. I think it will be support once it okay. gets through it. So oh, once okay. it gets once it gets, once it gets through that, there's the 200, the 50, and the 21 are all above oh, it. Oh, right? I see, I see, I see. Right. Once it gets through all of that congestion right there, right. Then then it will probably then it go up. Support. It will go up, and then it will come down, and then it will take off. Okay. 
So we'll come back cool. to 100. So I think right around this $100 area is probably a good buy point or, or a point to add. If I was in it and wondering if I should get out because it's had, you know, the sell off right here, I would probably not sell it. I would probably point. stick stick with it for the long term, especially if you're a long term investor. I probably yeah. would not get rid of it here. You'd probably be selling at the bottom if you sold here. Gotcha. Well, do me a favor, show your newsletter one time because I want to ask you about a company off recording. Okay. Uh, breakpointtrading at gmail.com. If you're interested in getting the newsletter, there's no charge for it. Uh, just send me an email. I'd be happy to add you. Very cool. Thank you so much.